He's looking real happy there and real bald. <laughs> and real alive. Yeah, a lot more than right now. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about how Chris Benoit was in my yearbook? No. And it was after he died, too. Um, wow. So fun story for everybody. Uh, yearbook every year. And in 2007, I guess it would have been my yearbook, um, it's entirely written by the student council with very little oversight. And clearly mm -hmm. somebody thought it would be funny to see how little oversight that the uh, teachers actually have. Because there's a mm -hmm. section where you talk about the, uh, great Canadian achievements of the year. Right. There was a tiny little blurb in there with a picture of Chris Benoit looking solemn in a suit where it said, um, Canadian, uh, Canadian pro wrestler Chris Benoit uh, murdered his wife and child and then commit suicide in his house in Edmonton. Or something like that. Jesus. And it made it in the yearbook. Great Canadian achievements. Fucking <laughs> How shitty is the peer review from the teachers? Horrible. Oh. I think he died in Atlanta, though, didn't he? I think it might have been Atlanta. I think the yearbook was actually just fucking wrong. Yeah. Because he's from so, Edmonton, okay. but uh, I'm pretty sure he spent... All I mean, he spent almost his entire American wrestling career in Atlanta because he was yeah. first and foremost a WCW guy, which is Atlanta, Georgia. I'll just get right to it. Yeah, because I remember, I remember hearing the like news when I was living there, and it was like, was oh, wow, he was, like, right down the road. The yeah. Oh, hey, Triple H, uh, he's got a Band-Aid now. I gave him a boo-boo in that match. <laughs> wow, what a fucking bitch. That's, that's not a good joke. You should feel bad for that joke. I am low Zach. Hey Vince, how was your vacation? When did let's cut the crap on her? You've been given great power as the interim general manager of Raw, but clearly you haven't used it responsibly. Whoa, whoa, Vince. Instead of featuring Raw superstars like Edge and Kane in the WWE title match at Backlash. You chose to satisfy All right, the subtitles are in the Titan Tron. <laughs> listen, Vince, you got it all wrong. No, you listen to me. Number one. Uh, double R13 says, I left earlier, so I don't know if you answered, two, but have you ever played any McDicky wrestling games? It's uh, Dickie. M. Dickey. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I have, and they suck. M. Dickey doesn't make good games. So you've got that long to get the hell out Make of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going on vacation? And by God, I mean. Well, uh, the audio desynced and the cutscene ended early, so that happened. Whoops. Huh. I love that the subtitles are in the Titan Tron. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> All right, Vince sent me a text. Um. All right, hey Lance Kid. <laughs> they always use your your full name in this game. It's weird. Hey Lance Kid, <laughs> I want you to know that I'm going to be taking over. Uh, the day-to-day -day operations here on Raw for a few weeks, and my top priority is to undo some of the damage Triple H did to the WWE title picture. I'm lifting Edge's suspension and strongly considering him as the number one contender candidate. But Kurt Angle and Kane are also high on my list. There was a hair on my microphone that was distracting me. Uh, Vince said that in his text message. Um, on my list as well, I'd like to see you in action against one of them tonight in a non-title match. I'll let, uh, let me know which one you'd like to face. So I'm picking Kurt Angle or Kane. Kurt Angle's more difficult, and I just turned up the difficulty. I'm gonna fight Kurt Angle. Let's have a legit, really hard match. Yes. He's one of the best dudes it. in the game. He's gonna reverse like crazy. He's got killer submissions. He's got no weak stats. This will be fun. All right, it's a regular Ooh. singles match. Okay. Win by DQ. Put chair in ring. He uses chair, I win. Yes. I have seen the AI be that stupid before. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's pretty great. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Oh, it's amazing. It's kind of like how in the new games, since a man can't hit a woman in the new games, a really great way to cheaply win matches is to have a female manager in the story mode and constantly <laughs> try and run behind her and see yeah. if your opponent accidentally hits her with a stray punch. Yes. <laughs> it's so good. 
Yeah. Then there was that one time that for no reason, Seamus walked out of the ring on one of the streams and just started beating the shit out of my fucking manager for no reason. <laughs> and got himself dq That was weird. He just killed her. He like laid her out on the apron and then big booted her head exposed on the apron and got <laughs> DQ'd. Oh, and then there's redneck noodle hair. Ah, uh, gotta love redneck noodle hair. Throw a chair in the ring, he clips it in the air, and it just kills him. <laughs> I know! And somehow there's no DQ for it. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Yeah, that was weird. Alright. Fuck you, Kurt. But I'm really laying out Kurt. Snapmare. Drop kick. There we go. Wow. Oh. Kurt, you're... You're kind of a bitch. What the hell? <laughs> wow. I am really kicking his ass. <laughs> nope. Nope. He, okay. There we go. He casually walked out of the way of that drop kick. I'm loving this because I absolutely cannot stand Kurt Angle. Like, I hate him. Why? He's awesome. He's obnoxious. Oh, I love Kurt Angle. No, his he, comedy shtick he used to do used to be so good. Pouring What's the milk that? on himself and everything. Well, he was uh, he was a co comedic character before he was like the serious Olympian badass. He was like, you know, drink your milk and stay abstinent, kids. And he was like <laughs> oh this God. really what? goofy because he's like he's because he was like he'd be like handing out condoms and stuff because you know he's the he's the American role model, Kurt Angle. And he'd come You're out kidding. and like he'd come out in like a little dinky cowboy hat and he'd be like. Look, guys, I'm just like you Texans here in the crowd. And oh he comes in a dinky cowboy hat looking like a fucking goof. Kurt Angle's got the best sense of humor. And okay. then when he was like the serious character, and he comes out with Davari, and he's a villain. And like Todd Grisham's interviewing him, he's like, how do you feel about your match? And he's like, well, I'll tell you how I feel about Booker T later. But I just want to get a few things off my chest. Uh, first of all, if I could go back in any in time and tap anybody out, it'd be Jesus. <laughs> and you know what? You know who I really like? The French people. And <laughs> and you know what? I've never really been a fan of the black people. <laughs> and Tugger Shim's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, the point is, I can say anything I want, and these idiots will still cheer me. And in the background, you can hear an angle, angle, angle chant. <laughs> Fucking Kurt Angle was the best. Okay, I changed my mind. Like, that sounds awesome. Oh my god. Awesome. And Davari was his manager, and as he said, if there's anybody I could tap out, it'd be Jesus. And Davari just chimes <laughs> in with, yeah, who'd he ever be? <laughs> 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 and there's that time he's in a feud with Booker T, and, he, and he's like, Booker T, I want to have wild sex with your wife. Like, wild <laughs> bestiality sex with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> and like, right. I think what he meant is like animal sex with his wife, but he literally implied that she is an animal, which has strange <laughs> racial connotations to it because she's black. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God, Kurt Angle. And then he was like an amazing wrestler on top of that. He's so oh. good. Man, I wish I could have seen his funny side. Cause, oh like, God. I yeah, I think you I missed his really funny era. I did, and, like, I hate his serious character. He's so obnoxious. Oh, God, I love it. And the thing, too, is, like, he always had those comedy elements, but he was also really good when he was the ultimate badass, Kurt Angle. Mm. When it was, like, he just come out with his mouth guard looking like he's ready to fucking kill somebody, and then he would. But he was only that for a very short amount of time before he went to TNA. Um, he's yeah. actually in that attire and with that special theme and everything in this game. Like, the fucking nice. killer. Like, that's when he started to take in the MMA influences before MMA got really big. Yeah. Because, you know, fucking... Because that's when he went to ECW in the very early days of WWE's ECW. And it, when it was still run by um, Paul Heyman. And Paul Heyman's a fucking visionary. He saw, he saw UFC getting big early, and he's like, this is what we need to capitalize on. So he's like, I want a character that is the ultimate fucking mixed martial arts badass, and Kurt Angle's perfect for it. And WWE mm -hmm. just didn't see the appeal, and they didn't go with it. Look nowadays, who's the biggest star in WWE? Brock Lesnar. What's his character? He's a UFC fucking killer. Nice. And he legitimately is an ex-UFC heavyweight champion. Mm-hmm. He's the only wrestler in WWE history who's been allowed to compete 
in UFC while being under contract for WWE. Mm -hmm. And he still wins his matches. So that just promotes WWE events where they can just say, hey, this guy won the most recent huge high profile match in UFC. And now he's wrestling for us. Nice. Well, I just completely punked out. Um, I completely punked out uh, Kurt Angle like it was nothing on hard difficulty yeah. with a Laren. Holy shit. I really am the world champion. Uh huh. Just fucking took his head off with a Lariat. Jesus. All right, I guess I'll up the difficulty again. God, this song always sounds like it starts with saying, Okay, KK! It does, though! And, the, and you like, know the exact one, don't you? The money, yes. that shitty money in the bank rap? Yes. Go and, money and in like, the bank. Show me what you what got. You Fucking garbage song. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, God, it's the worst. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Like, my cousin and I used to make fun of that exact same thing, like the OKKK -OK yep. thing. <laughs> like, Jesus. <laughs> oh, hold on, I got voicemail from Kurt Angle. <clears throat> nice. This is Kurt Angle. I just wanted to call and tell you to enjoy your last few hours of being able to walk without crutches. Because when I get in that ring tonight, it's the ankle lock for you, bucko. And a WWE title opportunity for me. I can't wait to see how you plan on defending the title at Vengeance after I've broken your damn ankle. He called me Bucko. <laughs> what the fuck, Kurt? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> I need to show you like a best of Kurt Angle compilation sometime. There is yes. a point, his funniest point was when he teamed up with uh, Edge and Christian back when Edge and Christian were doing their comedy routines where they'd uh -huh. come out to shows and they'd do the five second pose where they're going to be like, get your flash photography ready because we're going to do a five second pose. And then they'd, <laughs> they'd both pose in like ridiculous over the top flexing poses for five seconds for people to take pictures and then move to another one. And like, they start getting <laughs> wacky with it. They go to like, they go to like South Carolina and they'd be like, we got a bit of local flavor for you tonight. We call this this pose the jug band and then they pull out like <laughs> prosthetic buck teeth and like fucking <laughs> jugs to blow on for music and like fucking dumb fucking over the top hats and cowboy boots and they all pose like fucking racist characters of South Carolinians uh, South, South Carolinians and then <laughs> fucking do like incest jokes or some shit Jesus and then Christ. Kurt Angle joined them and they're like and they're like we got a great name Angle we can be team Eck Edge <laughs> Christian and Angle and he's like <laughs> he, he's like heck yeah guys let's do it <laughs> and like he'd be feuding with uh Stone Cold and Stone Cold's like chugging his beers and he's like you're you're promoting unhealthy drinking habits to the youth of tomorrow <laughs> Hey, everybody. So, like, you know, uh, Stone Cold would come out with his beer truck and, like, spray people with beer. And uh -huh. so the next week, Kurt Angle comes out and he's like, I'm going to do something a little more wholesome. And he starts spraying the ring with milk. <laughs> <laughs> At his Hall of Fame induction ceremony last year, I believe he ended it by saying, like, his old catchphrase of, oh, it's true. It's damn true. And then he took two jars of milk and poured them all over his own head. <laughs> and every time he comes out, because the whole joke was uh, when he feels with Edge, Edge's like, hey, I got some new lyrics to your song. You suck. You <laughs> suck. He's like singing along with the song. And to this day, even though everybody loves him, he'll come out. The crowd will chant, you suck with his song. And Kurt Angle will walk out to the arena on Raw nowadays pointing his ring, his hands in the air and chanting, you suck with them. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love Kurt Angle. Yeah, that's really Fucking funny. Fucking awesome. I love that guy. He was chanting, you suck with the crowd at his Hall of Fame induction. <laughs> <laughs> to, to make your ankles do the hurts, bucko. He's going to make your ankles drink the bone hurting juice, bucko. <laughs> Fucking Lizzie showed me the goddamn bone hurting juice meme I had never heard of. Fucking weirdest thing in the world. I'm not even gonna pretend to understand it. Oh my god. Yeah, Kurt does with a massive smile. He thinks the fucking you suck chant is the funniest thing. All right, who am I against? I didn't even check. Probably Triple H. 
Uh, triple threat against Crit Angle and Kane. Okay. I'll just let them fight a little. <laughs> Boner hurting juice. <laughs> I'm just going to flex it inside the ring a little. Oh yeah, I forgot taunting co uh, uses up stamina in this game. It does. It's I so weird. I cannot even explain. I guess I just flex so hard that it exhausts me. Oh yeah, I rem remember when he told people to stop doing the You Suck chants for the world's greatest tag team because they hadn't earned it, yeah. He, <laughs> uh, at a certain point in his career, he was the tag, he was a manager for a tag team as he took a while off of wrestling. Okay. Uh, and it was Charlie Haas and, um, and, uh, Shelton Benjamin who were really good. So he had to come up with a name for their tag team and he literally referred to them as the world's greatest tag team. That was the name of their tag team. <laughs> And they just, like, came out to... I think they originally came out to Kurt Angle's theme, but they got their own theme later. Those were some great wrestlers, though. <laughs> yeah, is Bone Hurting Juice uh, milk, or is that Bone Healing Juice? I feel like that's Bone Healing Juice, because, like, yeah. that, it's calcium. Fucking... Fucking magic Kurt Angle there. Insta <laughs> knows I'm going to the top rope. I do find it funny that it's faster to go to the top rope from the concrete floor than it is from within the ring. You mm. scale it so fast. Uh, I used up my finisher there. I went for a possum pin, but it didn't work. I'm just going to flex this side of the ring a little bit more. Let them have their match. Yeah. They can have their fun. I'm going to wreck the ringside area for fun. The little fun ways to ruin the game. <laughs> Let's just start uh, ruining these tables. <laughs> Yeah, Shawn Management is in talks for a comeback. I believe he is signed right now, but when they signed him, they didn't know he had a shoulder injury, so he's just recovering from that. So yeah, he's just not on TV yet, because shoulder injury. But apparently, okay. uh, apparently he's been cleared <laughs> now, I think, so that's good. Nice. I'm just gonna leave that there, Kurt, and uh, if you feel like using it, you can use it. I like how the ref has not even acknowledged there is a, a crazy man outside the ring pulling weapons and just leaving them around the ring. Who ha also happens to be your world champion. I know. This creator did not have anything to do? No, it's just they need to have an opportunity for him to come back because, you know, he was injured. So they need to find an opening in the storylines, you know. They can only write for so many people at a time considering they only have two hour show every week. Mm -hmm. Well, I got one little punch and I'm down forever now. There we go. Just let them do their thing. Alright, I'm getting back in the ring. Time to hit my first offensive move of the match. Mandy needs to, needs to hear the sexy Kurt song. I forgot about the sexy Kurt song. The what? The sexy Kurt song. That's all you need what? to know. But, okay. All I'm gonna tell you is that there's a sexy Kurt song, that's what it's called, and he sung it. <laughs> okay. Alright, Kurt, are you gonna do your- are you gonna do your burn, your bone hurting lock? Do it. Do it, you pussy. Hit him with the bone hurting lock. That's what it's called now. The boner hurting lock. Well, he kind of slammed the back of his head off that chair, so referee disqualify that chair. Oh, that was a blatant punch to the dick there, ref. You want to DQ him? Oh, right, he's got the bone hurting lock. I'm just going to stand behind him and make sure that there's not a sub there's not an actual tap out. Oh, they're not getting Yeah, he's got a rope break. And then it plays the weird sound effects, and Kurt's gonna run out of stamina. Wow, he clearly held that in for more than five. Mm -hmm. All right, Kurt, and now I kill you. This is a triple thing. No, there are no DQs. No, there are DQs in the game. This was way before that rule existed. 
That's why they're not using the chair in the ring. That's uh, the no DQ on triple threats was only very recent, and I believe it's still not even in most of the games. By default, triple threats in the games are disqualification. Right. Fucking eye rake. Oh, they're gonna stay out of the ring? I'm gonna go in the ring. Oh, they're going in the ring? I'm gonna get out of the ring. <laughs> you guys have fun with that. Damn, this is before they made it so you can check match rules while you're in the match. Nice clothesline, bro. You completely missed. Uh, Angle's <laughs> getting killed. Oop. Back off a little. You know what? If Angle hits like an Angle slam on Kane, then I could lay out Angle with my Lariat and probably just pin him. What the hell's that thing Kane did go uh, the ring? Oh, he he would always backflip out of the ring. It's really impressive, actually, for a dude his size. Right. Fuck you, Kane. Hot shot his throat off the rope. Get out of the way, ref. There we go. I think I've got this one. No, no, fuck. Angle's getting up. Ah, goddamn. Probably could have got it there. The ref was in the way. I could have just ran and bounced off the ropes and got him. That'd have been great. Get some yeah, momentum. Well, definitely. This was the last WWE game where run was a button and you ran in a static direction. After this hey. is when they made it where you could just hold it down and run in any direction. Although that did make it a bit difficult to get on top of the uh, ring ropes sometimes, like on the turnbuckle. It was a little spotty for a while. Right. Yeah, we need some bone healing juice up in this bitch. Up, oh, fucking get out of my wake, Kane. Oh god. Oh god, the targeting's all fucked up. <laughs> Alright, swinging neck breaker. Oh fuck. God damn it. Wish I could just manually switch my view to him easier. There we go. I think I've got this one. Come on! Ref, count it! Count it, Ref! Oh, he kicked out? Holy shit! Damn it. Hey, wavy baby. I've been doing good. Everybody better have went and uh, followed Wavy Baby Gaming. When I was streaming uh, some Stalker before, I think it was AFK at the time, but he came to the stream for a little bit, and when I was ending, I told everybody to go follow him. So everybody <laughs> need to, needs to go follow him. Because I said so, and my word is law. And, yes. uh, yeah. Uh, if you don't all go follow him, then I'm actually going to permaban myself, uh, which would mean <laughs> that I can no longer stream. Uh, really, I feel like it's, it's biting me more than anyone else because he shouldn't be watching me in the first place because his stream's not any good. But, you know, we, we all make our own mistakes. Alright, choke him off the rope. G God damn it! Heat-seeking Kurt! Every time I get on the top rope, he just sprints at me. Oh, man. God damn, he's trying to break my leg. Didn't 08 make everyone have a running neck breaker? I mean, almost everybody, yeah. A few games had that because they didn't have many running grapples. So they just gave a shitload of running neck breakers. Fucking get up. All right, I'm good. I'm still doing the best in this match so far. Oh, nope, bail out of there. Don't want to fight Kane. In fact, I'll just pin Kurt. Uh, it's probably rope break. No. Nah, Kane broke it up. I'm the world champion. I can't lose a match now. I'm still undefeated. Come on, Kurt, tap out to the chin lock. To the deadly chin lock. Hey, Bray Lux. Yeah, Kane, hit the choke slam, and then I'll hit you, and then I'll pin Kurt. I'm like a vulture picking the bones. Except for I'm a Texan man, pinning people in <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> Same thing. Absolutely. Whoa! Fucking... What was that? Lucha cane! <laughs> Holy shit!
All right, Kane, go go choke slam Kurt. Oh, my move to the outside is just a baseball slide. I was hoping I had some fucking wacky Palancha dive like Kane. Oh god, I really gotta change the uh, control scheme so that I have manual targeting. It's so much better. Oh god, more Lucha Kane! Fucking backflipped out of a belly to back <laughs> suplex. Jesus Christ! So good. Alright, just let them do their thing. I don't want them using a finisher on me. Come on, Kane. Come closer. How many times is he gonna fall for that? I just keep. Hot shotting his throat off the rope. <laughs> uh, Kurt's totally gonna break that up. Yep, not even a one count. Jesus, nice suplex, Kurt. <coughs> oh, oh, am I gonna roll up? Might actually get it this time. Come on. Holy shit, I just barely got it there. That God was damn. great. Yeah. Me only wanted to come to Bread's channel for the scholars in the chat. This match is <laughs> over, but it looks like Kane I mean, I'm team. here. I'll have you know we're all geniuses. I'm here to be the voice of all scholars on the chat. Guys, my brain so, number is really high. It is an honor to be reading such text. More like an honor roll, am I right? Because we're so smart. Absolutely. You all get an A today. My ick is really high. It's spelled <laughs> IQ. I'm smart enough to know there should be a U after that. <laughs> well, uh, Edge is a punk bitch and speared me after the match in a match he was not involved in. Uh, a little Itch. Yep, I'm still undefeated. What have I had, like 20 matches? I'm still undefeated? That's okay. <laughs> no one can beat me. I'm too good. Yep. So is the next match going to be my uh, title match? Yep, we got Edge. What you did last week was not what I had in mind when I lifted the suspension. <laughs> that brain number is A+. Plus. <laughs> but then again, I have to admit, you did make an impact. Good shoulder tattoo, bro. Is what Raw is all about. <laughs> Therefore, since you had already earned a WWE Championship match prior to Triple H's unfortunate tenure as general manager, I'm naming you. Uh, Wavy Baby says, You better watch out. My beard is starting to creep up on yours. Well, you've got the throne at the moment, but watch out. I'm almost there. I keep shortening mine. I used to have, like, the beard that kind of comes gratitude. to a point. What the hell do mm -hmm. I have to be grateful But I've for? rounded it off a bit more. Be the WWE champion by now. I'm going more like World War I Bulgarian general. Well, you could be grateful <laughs> for the fact that Kane and Kurt Angle haven't gotten their hands on you for what you did to them last week. But I think that's about to change. I'm putting you and the WWE champion in a tag team match. Edge looks really weird. He looks a little like a caveman. Whatever. It's the brow. He really show. does, though. Surprisingly, Edge's attitude has gotten I like how whenever it goes into a pre-rendered well, cutscene, you know the, the, uh, the, the blending bad. options on the emulator just throw up all of themselves and get, like, all fucking <laughs> weird and everything's, like, pseudo-blurry crazy-looking. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, Wavy Baby is going for more of the Turkish kebab experts. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I used to have, like, the Russian Tsar, where, like, it goes it goes down, you know, like, Ivan the Terrible kind of thing, where it's, like, you know, it's 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 not super, like, closely shaved on the sides, but it's it's subtle, whereas it just goes straight down for a really long time. I had that for a little while. Um, I don't think it was, uh, the best for me, though, so I've, I've rounded it off more. Actually, I need to shorten the bottom a little bit right now. But I have not shortened my mustache in... Mm. I haven't shaved my, my mustache off since high school, and I'm 24 now. Yep. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, I have not seriously shortened my mustache probably five years um i'll trim the bottom a bit for the sake of eating food 
Uh, but the sides, I just trim a little bit so that they're evenly length and then just let it grow. And I have mustache wax and a mustache comb. But for the most part, my mustache just grows in this direction now because I've, I've trained it to grow that way with the comb. So I, don't, I haven't even used the wax in forever. Although I should, it's nice. Might take the beard crown. But the mustache, no way. Yeah, I don't know if you saw me a couple years ago when I shaved the beard but kept the mustache. Um, oh my god. My mu it really shows how huge my mustache is. That little you while like where I- like a doofy Mario character. Yeah, I did so seriously look like a Mario character, but my mustache is fucking enormous. It's hard to tell with the beard as the backdrop, but when you see that video of me last year with the shaved face, but with the mustache, it's enormous. Uh, my fiance has actually never once seen me in person without a mustache, and we've been together for nearly a decade now. Yep. Uh, she has only ever seen me without a mustache in pictures. All right, Kane sent me a voicemail, because apparently that's a thing Kane does. This is Kane. Yep. I suggest you stay out of my way tonight in our tag team match. I'm looking forward to pulling Edge apart, limb from limb. Was that a couple of years ago? I feel like it was one year that ago. That was one year ago. Yeah, I remember it was like last summer. That was in Mississauga. Yeah. Actually, it's a little less than a year ago. Yeah, I, I remember it was late summer. Um, what video is this? Uh, just go check out my playlist on YouTube of Knights of Pen and Paper, because I was playing that at the time, so I think one episode I got a beard, and then the next episode I'm basically clean-shaven but with a mustache, and then you can see the beard slowly grow back in over the weeks. Mm-hmm. Now, clean-shaven, I look fucking weird. I look a little bit more normal if I have heavy stubble in the mustache, but really, I'm I'm kind of guy who really does need a beard and the huge mustache over top of it. It's been three <laughs> weeks since you stopped smoking cigarettes. Nice! Congratulations. Nice. I saw your stream blow the fuck up a while ago, by the way. You had, like, fucking 600 viewers or something. Congratulations, you've been streaming goddamn, like, fucking every day or something. I swear to God, every time I go check, you're online. Mm-hmm. Yeah, deserves it. Yep. You vape. <laughs> you're missing as the fidget spinner and you'll be the <laughs> coolest streamer ever. You can, you can, like, spin the fidget spinner with your fucking e-cigarette thing. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That can be your new logo. You wear a hat with, like, with, like, it says, like, Vape Nation has got, a, like, a fidget spinner with, like, fucking marijuana leaves on it. Make it as obnoxious as you can. <laughs> Either that, or you get, like, the beanie with the Pikachu ears. A lot of those people wear those. No, get those ears that, like, react to your mood by, like, moving around. Oh my god. So, you know, you look like this rapper badass dude, except for you've got these weird cat ears that try and respond to your, uh, your, your emotions. Oh, and braid your beard. Yeah, and braid your beard. But, like, braid- don't braid it like a fucking badass fantasy dwarf kind of braid. No. Braid like, it like, like with the, like a pink bow. Yeah, and and get like a man bun. Yeah. But a man bun in the front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get get like a scene get a wig that's like a scene girl, like bleach blonde but with like the roots grown out uh wig and you front man bun that you just like double side tape it to your forehead. <laughs> the most dignified streamer on Smashcast. <laughs> oh my god, that would be incredible. And then you can get everybody hyped behind it. Hashtag kawaii mode. We're halfway through the streams. If it if everyone starts retweeting like hashtag kawaii mode, everybody comes kawaii mode time over on Wavy Baby Gaming. And that's when you put on the ears that react to your emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. Uh. <laughs> Came for the video games. Stayed for the. Stayed for quiet mode. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need the Hello Kitty scrunchy for the bun, definitely. Yeah, Hello Kitty scrunchy. Either that or pot leaves. <laughs> No, have have Karopi, because he's already green for the pot leaves. There you go. <laughs> That's branding! That's perfect. branding. Fucking perfect. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. So good. Uh, Wavy Baby <clears throat> wants access to your Discord. So oh, could someone post them an Insta link? Yes. Oh my god. I think I might have it in my channel about page. I don't really remember. Uh, I don't. I don't remember. Someone just drop them a link. I know it's on my YouTube at least. Coming right up. Oh, who was it before I said it's the first time watching? I feel bad I didn't respond to that. I was just getting really caught up in my shitty joke. <laughs> so someone came by and said, "Oh shit!" An hour ago, someone donated fifty bucks, and for some reason, my notification didn't play. Um, Dugrans donates fifty American dollars. Holy shit, that's a lot Canadian. That's like 75 Canadian. It says, uh, just lost my job. Had my date turn me down because I'm too short and I've been really depressed, but your streams and vids always uh, give me a kick. Just wanted to say thanks. I'm happy that uh, I can cheer you up in some way. I'm really sorry to hear that things have been so shit recently. If you need a refund on that money for whatever reason, because you've been laid off, then just let me know. I'm totally cool with sending the money back if you end up needing it. So, uh, who, who was it earlier said it's the first time watching? I want to I wanna properly uh, say hi to him. Thanks for dropping that link, Prelex. Aw, oh, man, you beat me to it. For thanking Prelex? Uh, no, for posting it. Oh. Hello, Kitty Scrunchy, Man Bun, Vape Fidget Spinner. I'm on my way to the big leagues, yeah! You are here. Now you need, uh, giant fake tits. Jiggle them constantly, have a whole lot of accidents where people just happen to see a little more than you maybe intended. <laughs> oh wait, m wait a minute, this is uh, this is Smashcast, we actually inf enforce our bans here. Na 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 Oh, there we go. I, I can't read the name because my vision sucks and that text is really hard to read on a dark gray background for me. Is it... Kathsayer? Uh, uh, it was Kate, me, it's Kate my first Sierra. name. Kathsayer? That's a good name. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, give me the phonetical in the chat, Kathsayer, so that I can get your name right. I don't like getting people's names wrong, because I've got a difficult name too, so... I don't get mad at people for it, but I like to get people's names right. So, sneak preview of what might be happening on the channel later. Brandon and I have been practicing a lot of uh, Crusader Kings too, because he's not as experienced at it. So, uh, yeah. so you know, we want to do a playthrough together. That'd be pretty fun, because us playing it multiplayer together is always a shit show. Uh huh. Uh, KFCR just uh, yeah. can't space. Okay, so I think we're getting it right then. Um, yeah. But Brandon and I have also uh, just started learning how to play Arma Three. Oh my god, us playing Arma 3 together is quite the beautiful shit show. It's so advanced. Uh, so we want to start recording some Arma 3 sometime. It's like a super realistic um, near future military shooter. Where, nice. like, you know, it's it's very near future. You know, you're not using lasers or anything. It's only like 20 years in the future. It's just like drone technology is a little better, you know? Uh -huh. um, I actually huh. locked up with the ref there. That was unintentional. Yes, Wavy Baby, we are recording. Yeah, because th this is going on YouTube later, so y you're getting a fucking promo on my YouTube channel later. Yay! Oh, fucking side head locked me. Uh, oh my god, Arma 3? Yeah, because we were going to do Arma 2 and we're like, you know, let's try and get into one of the games. And then we saw, coincidentally, Arma 3 is on like a 75% off, so we're like, okay, fuck it. We can spend 15 bucks and get this. And it was can really I fun. Can I give Wavy Baby permission to go into the recording booth? I don't know if you're able to because I don't know how I have my permissions set up right now. Yeah, I know I'm an admin, but... I don't know if you're... Uh, I think admin is default only set to one person, but there's also moderator status, there's friends of the show. I don't remember what the exact permissions for each thing is. Yeah. I do have moderator status. I it doesn't okay. look like I can give permission, though. Alright, I'll set that up later then, because I think yeah. I might want to wrap up the stream somewhat soon, just because... Um, I do have shit I need to do with Brandon. I think he's off work soon. All right. Yeah, and I've got to come. I've got to finish packing. Oh yeah, because you've you know you're moving tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. And you started packing this morning. Yes. It's a good thing you don't own much. Yeah, I don't really have a lot of stuff. 
And, like, I didn't really unpack most of my stuff when I moved here, so... There we go, I fucking killed Kane. Took his head off with that lariat. Good. Angle's, like, not hurt at all. He hasn't been tagged in. Speaking of not tagged in, I kind of want to tag an edge. At the same time, he'll probably blow it and let Kane tag out. Yeah, my one rule about the uh, recording chat is don't enter until you've asked permission and heard feedback because often when I'm in the recording chat, it's literally I'm recording something and if people someone joins in, it'll fuck up a recording session and because it's my job, that's actually really bad. Luckily, I don't think I've ever had a single instance of that happening. People have been pretty good about it. I did it once. Um, just want you to know your old profile picture is still on Steam. Thank you for letting me know. I'll change that later, because I knew I'd forget my old profile picture somewhere. And uh, Steam is apparently that place that I have forgotten to move to the new profile picture. Yeah. Um, one time I saw you in there by yourself, so I was just curious. I was like, well, what you doing? And you got really mad at me. No, I, I, I didn't get mad. It was just, I just said, oh, I'm getting set up for a recording. And then you thought I was <laughs> mad at you and I had to clarify it. You're yeah. fucking paranoid, by the way. Fucking Fatima comes to me every goddamn day about how you're worried that I'm, like, upset or something. No, I have never in my life been upset with you. You've never been anything but nice with me. You're too paranoid. I, I know, I have really bad anxiety. You gotta stop getting so worried. Nobody's mad at you. You're always like worried that like somebody doesn't like you on the stream. I'm like, what is she talking about? That's just the person's sense of humor. No one does, there's not a human who doesn't like Mandy either than the one person who's like, you have no standards because I don't like Mandy's <laughs> voice. And then the person was, I was like, wow, you're a bitch. <laughs> and the person was all like, oh, you're so defensive when I insult your pressure from many. I'm like, you're reading way more into this. You're the crazy person here, lady. Purse, YouTube commenter, you're taking this a little seriously. That was so funny. And my favorite is, not only does Mandy get praised when she is here, and she gets praised when she's not here, and people are like, when's Mandy coming next? She gets praised when other people are here, because twice <laughs> now I've had Lizzie in the stream, and Lizzie's voice is so similar to yours that people come in and be like, oh, hey, Mandy, I missed you. Because <laughs> your voices are shockingly similar to the point that we keep joking that we can't wait for the day that you're both in a stream at the same time because you can start fucking with people. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that'll be a mess. Well, I actually just got my ass kicked with that choke sound. I'm actually a little concerned. I think I might tag out. Missed Mandy, to be honest. She's just been super busy. She's, like, moving, and she's got jobs, working doubles and shit. She's mm -hmm. got jobs that are important because she's keeping animals from dying, and that's yep. slightly more important than this shit show. I'm a vet tech now. Just slightly more important. You know? There's- there's animal lives, but hey, we really need to talk about turkey fuckers. <laughs> Do you know that they bring up the turkey fucking thing in, like, every stream now? Do they really? Yeah, that's a show meme now, is the whole first guy ever executed in American history, um, was a turkey fucker. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, that's, like, one of my favorite stories about American history. Prelix just said, uh, I was going to say that when I first joined, but I didn't want to mistake anybody just slightly. See, even Prelix, who's always here, wasn't quite sure if it was you or Lizzy. I didn't, I don't, I've never even met Lizzy. Lizzy's very new to the show. It's literally just like, I, I follow a lot of like independent art Twitters with like a hundred followers because I like art. And I saw that this person put up a YouTube speed art video and it was unlike all the other ones I watched where instead of just like sped up art, Lizzie was doing, like, commentary, and it was really funny, and I just contacted and just said, like, hey, you'd be really good at Let's Play. And Lizzie nice. like, just super flattered. I'm like, you want to just come on my stream later? And they're like, yeah! And then they came on, and everybody instantly loved Lizzie. And it's like, it's my first time ever talking to Lizzie, and everybody already nice. fucking... It's, it's great. So, um, yeah. And it was full of weird memes, because Lizzie is 18, and uh -huh. I am detached from the youth of tomorrow. Right. And Lizzie's from North Car uh from um not north, uh the middle of California. So uh -huh. it's like the fucking cutting edge of the youth of tomorrow. So I don't get any of these oh, yeah. fucking Tumblr memes. Yeah. Bone hurting juice? What the fuck is bone hurting juice? I don't know, but it's funny. <laughs> 
So, it's basically, what if you had, what if you were here, but every single joke you made was in a slightly lower pitched voice, you giggled less, and every joke made me say, is this some weeb shit? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. God, I really need to play more Yakuza 0. That game was awesome. Do I have to tell the, the birthday ruining story again? Wavy it's, baby wants to hear it. To be fair, it is kind of every stream that you tell it. But also to be fair, <laughs> new playthrough! People on YouTube might not know. Tell the birthday ruining story. Jesus Christ. Okay, so a couple of years ago I worked at Subway. And... Um, you know, Subway sells cookies, even though, like, it's not the most popular food item there. We're, like, we're known for our sandwiches. So, you know, every morning we make about six dozen cookies, and we just have an array of different flavors. So, we're, it's lunchtime, and that's, like, the busiest hour of the day. It's, it's, like, one o'clock, there are 30 people in line, and this guy walks up, and he's like, I would like 72 chocolate chip cookies, like, right now. And I was like, um, we don't have that. Uh, I, I'm really sorry, but we, we just don't have that right now. He was like, what do you mean we don't have it? Like, I, I need this. I need six dozen chocolate chip cookies, like, right now. Uh, I was like, well, um, you could wait about 20 minutes and I can get those ready for you as a special order. But you kind of should have called ahead of time. And he was just so livid with me. Like, it was an outrage. He was like, I, I don't understand. Why don't you have 72 chocolate chip cookies for me? How dare you? You ruined my son's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, so I was like, uh, I'm terribly sorry I ruined your son's birthday. This this kid, this like little six-year-old kid is with his dad and he's just like off in the corner embarrassed as shit. He doesn't want anything to do with this. And like, oh, this guy just went off on me. And uh, long story short, I wound up getting fired a few months later and it was for really, really stupid personal reasons. And the manager used that incident as leverage to fire me. And I was like, wasn't that an incident, too, that your manager at the time had told you, Wow, that guy sounds like a fucking asshole. Yes, she did. Yeah, and then wasn't it like you caught her fucking cousin or something slacking and you had proof of it? So you're like, I'm gonna, like, I'm, I'm gonna just report this tomorrow. And you told, like, an yeah. employee and you're like, Do you have anything you want to add when I report this? And they fucking tattled on you. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah. So, sh sh and assistant manager and he just never did shit he was lazy as fuck and he had a terrible attitude so i started taking pictures of him just like on his phone or, or just doing whatever and um i told my coworker about it i was like i'm gonna report this guy to corporate because this is stupid um so you, you know you want to add anything to the report when i report him and uh yeah he told on me <laughs> Kate, Slayer, uh, Kate says, uh, Mandy, isn't that what the woman who brought your car said during the Dead Island stream? No. I don't understand that, but I think I I'm not either. remembering the It was a while ago, the Dead Island streams. That was, like, um, that was the first ever hitbox, uh, community checkpoint thingies where we, yeah, it was um, like the summer thing. Yeah, the, the, the big summer promotion where we played summer games and I did Dead Island. Um, yeah. And I beat all of Dead Island Definitive Edition in six days, which was excruciating torture playing that single player. Because that game's terrible enough as is. Like, Act 1 is pretty fun, and after that it gets pretty bad. But multiplayer, yeah. at least you can tolerate it. Single player? Yeah. I fucking hated myself by the end of those streams. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Um, Man, that did... was a slog. Yeah. I did sell my car last summer around the same time, so... Um... It must be related to that, then. Maybe, I don't know, like, uh... Did I you ruin like, the car seller's son's birthday? No, like, they just bought the car and they drove... Oh god, crazy story about that, though. Last week, I got a phone call from my insur my car insurance, and they were like, um, we want to hear your side of the story about this accident you've been in. And I was like, wait a minute, what accident? What are you talking about? So, like, I called my agent, and she was like, 
Uh, there is a report against you for an accident that you've been in on June 7th um, for your Pontiac Sunfire. That's the car I sold last year. So I was like, <laughs> what the shit is going on right now? These people never signed the car over to their name. They kept it in my name and just never got tags. <laughs> wow. I know. They got into an accident and um they they reported my insurance for it i was like this is bullshit okay one scumbags because there's no way that was an accident that they did that um uh -huh. and and two they've probably gotten some really serious legal shit for doing that they did because i still have the bill of sale so like i scanned Ooh. the bill of sale and sent it over i was like i sold this fucking car in august what are you talking about Mandy got stories for days. Oh god, we both have stories. We will never run out of stories. We've had wacky lives. Yeah, we really have. I could like tell that? you about high school for years. I could tell you about the time <laughs> that like I went I did a victory lap in high school where I came back for one extra semester for fun. I didn't need to. Because in my school, when you come back for another semester, you can take any courses you want that don't have a gender divide. So anything but women's gym. So like I was uh, I was taking, like, a grade 11 uh, leadership course and stuff uh, when I was two or three years older than everybody else and stuff like that. Um, and I was one of the people in charge of uh, running the high school Halloween party, which may have gone a little bit out of hand when multiple of the teachers who I'm convinced were drunk basically just left the students to do anything they want. So I just hung back on, like, the food bar the whole time, because that's where I was assigned. And a lot of wacky shit happened. Like, um, the time that, uh, because we brought in a couple hundred water bottles, because we weren't allowed to let people bring their own water in, because it would be assumed they'd spike it. Um, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons, because they absolutely spiked it. Uh, and uh, our ch coat check people were vapid idiots who didn't give a shit so absolutely there was alcohol there and it wasn't oh, that fuck. they it wasn't that they didn't care or it wasn't that they were like uh intentionally letting it through it's that they were useless and on their phones the whole time so there was a ton of alcohol in there uh, people were walking in and out of the bathroom constantly filling up water bottles why uh because one of the guys who was in the leadership class with us and thus working with us he was on his break so he uh -huh. Uh, so he walks up to us and he's like, hey, hey, man, can I have some water? I'm like, yeah, sure, because I can give it out to this to the what would essentially be the staff, the organizers for free. So I gave him a water bottle. Um, and then he, he walked to the dance floor for a little bit. And then he comes back and he's got water all over him. And he's like, I need like four water bottles. And I'm like, all right. I hand him four water bottles. He starts filling them in all of his pockets and everything. He walks back in. All of a sudden, the uh, some girl comes running out of the uh, cafe, which is where the the dance was being held through the through the um, through like the the front lobby, the front foyer where I was, and she's running to the bathroom, soaking wet, yelling, "Someone's throwing water bottles!" <laughs> and then, wow. and then all of a sudden, water bottle sales fucking skyrocketed <laughs> for the entire next three hours everybody was having a water bottle fight an open water bottle fight, fight to the point that i think i saw the dj run out at one point and when we were cleaning up after there was oh my god when when the when we were cleaning up after there was a haze of mist in the air it was hard to breathe there was so much water in the air um there Jesus. was a there was a broken window with blood on it so i think someone oh punched my God. someone punched it through the window and the most impressive part is that these windows these are school windows which means it's double glassed and has its safety metal mesh in the middle to make sure that if it shatters the glass doesn't fall out someone pushed through punched through the steel mesh that, or someone fucking took a baseball bat to it, shoved it through, and then someone else got cut on it. Or maybe a head went oh through it, God. I don't know. This is the high school Halloween party, <laughs> and a fucking, apparently a gang of drunk people went around, um, a bunch of saplings had just been planted in the yard of the school, and for fun, a gang of people went around ripping the saplings out of the ground for no reason. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. And I was the guy who had to call the police um, a week ahead of time. I, I called the police and I said, like, okay, 
we've been allowed this budget for the um for the the Halloween dance and everything. Uh, we want to hire some police security to just hang around outside the dance. We don't think we're going to need you inside. Hang around outside because we had instances in previous years of basically just vandalism on the outside of the school. And they're like, you got it. So they just hang hung out outside. We never thought we'd need them inside. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I uh, don't think anyone died. So that's, that's well, nice. that's good. Uh, sorry. So uh, Wavy asked um, a question. What did he say? Uh, Wavy Baby wants you to join his podcast uh, with Savvy Siren and um, ask a few questions for you at some point. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. Savvy is the best and Wavy is the best. I mean, we basically did an impromptu podcast once where uh, was it me, Wavy Savvy? And I believe someone else was there. Just for whatever reason, by happenstance, we all guessed on Savvy's stream at like 11 at night and we ended up staying there till about 4 a.m. just all talking to her. It's just mm -hmm. fun. The latest I stayed up in forever. <laughs> I fucked up my sleep so bad for like a week doing that. Uh, all right, oh, so what's this text? Uh, I want to know uh, tonight on Raw. That's not what I said. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to scroll up and read it myself. Uh, hey, Brad, you missed it earlier, but I want to interview you on my podcast. Unrehearsed, unscripted, some um, sort of like uh, that night. You oh, okay. Yeah, you're referencing that. Uh, but more like, yeah, yeah. So like an interview podcast with me. Yeah, I'm up for it. I probably got a shitload to talk about because again, I've been doing YouTube professionally for seven years. <laughs> I've been streaming since before Twitch TV existed. Um, I I just started editing for Geek Remix, like a mm -hmm. 150,000 subscriber channel on YouTube. I They did a tad video the other day that I made. Um, they have a video coming up on Friday that I was the editor for. Um, there's another channel that is likely hiring me shortly after Saturday that I can't say the name of yet. Uh, that's quite <laughs> large that I've been wanting to tell you guys about for goddamn ever, but the video is finally I going know. up on Saturday. So you'll finally know. So that's big. Woo! I got a lot of stories to tell. And then there's the whole, I'm a cripple thing that everybody always wants to know about. I tell the story constantly, but like, you know, it's, it's hard to follow. I can say that I got Ehlers Danlos and uh, Cerebral Palsy, but most people don't know what that means because they're two conditions that are kind of like a mixed bag, bag of shit, so it's different for everybody. Yeah. MDB, humble bragging of the humbles of bragging. If I was humble bragging, I wouldn't be telling you that I routinely struggle to pay rent. We live hand to mouth, I cut meals for the sake of rent. So don't go thinking I'm some fucking superstar, I'm not. I've been doing this for seven years. If I were a superstar, I'd be a fuck of a lot bigger than now. I started before PewDiePie. I started before Markiplier. I started before a lot of the people who are famous. All that tells you is I'm way less successful. Mm. That's on me more than anything. Because I know a lot of ways to get really popular, <laughs> and I don't do them because I have standards. <laughs> No fair, he's podcasting himself. I'm, my show is always a podcast. The games are a backdrop more than anything. All right, I've been rambling long enough. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this stream. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Support me on Tad if you want to. Phone application and browser page in the description where you can watch some advertisements to get me paid far better than I do on any other site. Got my donation thing if you want to donate. Patreon if you want to get some rewards and everything. Amazon affiliate links if you want to buy some stuff on Amazon, get some money. If you're watching this on YouTube, check out the playlist in the description if you want to catch up on all these videos. As well as the link to my Smashcast TV page where you can watch this live next time. Um, next stream, so this week I'm going to be doing Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to try and stream weekends every single week now. And this Wednesday stream was brought to you by Tad because you guys passed a $25 threshold last week. And that meant I could spend this time doing a stream instead of editing something that would get me paid. So thank you, buddy. Do more Tad and I'll do more streams. Thank you, buddy, for watching. And until next time, have a nice day. Bye-bye. Um,